disembodied screaming, mystery goo in the hotel, gnomes dressed as deer, grab a snack and help us unpack all that and more, it's time for Ghost Files Debrief! Oh boy, it's the last one. Thank you for joining us. I'm Ryan Bergara, and that thing over there is my colleague Shane Madey. Shane! <laughs> <laughs> Each week here on Debrief, we look back at our most compelling evidence behind the scenes moments and answer your burning questions. Cool. Okay, um, can we take a quick break? Yeah, I got that's fine. 10 1. That's code for P. Yeah, I know, I get it. Take yeah. It. Oh, I'll I'll go ahead and hop online. I gotta check something anyway. Oh, looks like the internet's down. Let me see if I can join another Wi-Fi. Hey, ghoul boy. I'd think twice about that. I knew there was a ghost floating around here somewhere. You needed one. It also sounds like you need to sign up for a NordVPN account via the link below. In the bunker or on the road, you ghost hunters need to maintain privacy and protect your online activity. NordVPN is fast and reliable and creates an encrypted network that hides your dedicated IP address and shields you from trackers and malware. Yeah, that sounds like a snug blue blanket keeping me safe and secure. You know what's not secure, Ryan? Those passwords you keep on post-it notes that the audience sees. No, they don't. Yes, they do. But NordVPN can help with all their amazing cybersecurity tools like NordPass to access all your passwords, an encrypted cloud storage app called NordLocker, and the data breach scanner, which sends alerts if any sensitive information is exposed. Hmm, wow. Yes, wow. One NordVPN account connects and protects up to six devices remotely and securely, and includes 24-7 customer service support. So, the whole crew is covered. Okay, I'll sign up now. What's that link again? Get this exclusive NordVPN deal right now via this link below for a two-year plan, plus four additional spooky months. It's risk-free now with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Got a jet! That was a long pee. Uh, who are you talking to over here? Are you talking more ghosts again? Yeah, so. I told you there's a ghost in this office. Oh, very good, very good. Uh, hey, oh, back to the show. <laughs> Enough about the toilet, though. What would you think about the Hinsdale house? It was a house uh, in um, Hinsdale. Was that the town? No, town? I think that's just the name of the house. Oh, that's cool. They had a toilet there, too. What was the town we stayed in? Olean. Oh, yeah. Olean. We pronounced it wrong, though. Well, I pronounced it Olean like those uh, potato chips that give you loose stools, but I think it's pronounced Olean. Nice. But uh, yeah, we stayed in a little tiny town in New York. Mm. Um, not much to do there. We went out for pizza, the haunted place. I don't have a lot of memories of it. It was rainy. Sam was there. She got spooked. We got stuck on our way home in Dallas and had to stay in a little hotel that was scary. So we left and yeah. went to a different hotel. Is that about everything? And the place was haunted. I was about we, to say you forgot a, everything except about the actual <laughs> location. <laughs> the ghost investigation. Yeah, there was gnomes and a lady with eyes bucking out of her Yeah, head. but they saw all that. Somebody asked me to pull my meat. Yeah. It was yeah. a good episode. It was a great ep, great finale. Let's get our debrief of the haunted Hinsdale house started with a sprinkle of behind the scenes footage. That's right, it's time for Carter's log. Carter's travel log. She a little creeped out about this location though. Oh, what the fuck? Holy, <laughs> holy shit. shit. <laughs> what the fuck? Holy shit. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Can you see how the stairs go? What is that? What is that right there? <laughs> That's a bird. <laughs> oh gosh. This area looks like the footage to like Blair Witch Project. I feel right at home. Okay, that's good. Apparently there's fireflies here. Oh shit. Yeah. Gotta get it closer. Gotta protect Mark. What are these stairs? I know. Right? And cheers, everybody! Woo! Oh, two. Let's go, baby! We did it. And we did a bonus episode. How are we feeling? Scared. Scared. Can't wait to be alone in a room. I can't wait to see your reaction. How are you feeling, Mark? Last feel ghost good. on the season two. Oh, I feel really good. <laughs> and I got my monster energy. It's about to kick in. You'll be it's bouncing off the wall soon. But this location seems pretty nuts, so. Yeah? Um, what What did you find on the scout yesterday? Anything super creepy? It was just completely isolated. It's like the type of place where you have no service. You're out. The nearest house is within, I didn't know, you know we had no service. Out of miles, yeah. Miles out. I don't even know where the nearest hospital is. So if something were to happen, we could probably be in a 
little situation, a sticky situation, some might say. Yeah, we'll make it through, though. We'll do Off this. Adrenaline and teamwork and, and love. <laughs> and love. <laughs> That's the most important part. Yeah. Creepy. Or do you want these on the ground? It's not my favorite. Um, and I'm not really a big fan of the haunted farmhouse aesthetic. All right, cheers for a long cheers. season. Wrap on season two. Flight delayed. Wow. So I guess we're not gonna get our luggage until we reach LAX tomorrow. And they didn't tell half of us, so a lot of us are missing our toiletries and clothes. But fuck. <laughs> Finally getting on three hours later. Uh, what's going on is to be honest, I don't know. We're in Dallas right now. We're trying to see if we can get comp to rooms because it's Americans' fault. Yeah, yeah, we missed our, our next flight. Dipping ship. All right, bug right there. There's a bug. Comp room. Walked in. These switches didn't work at all. Should be alright though. Ghost hunters, after all. <laughs> all right, let's, let's shine that on the ghost. Let's, let's check this view out. Uh huh. Let's get a better look at that view. <laughs> all right, so just got news that we're heading back to our good old fashioned holiday and baby. Um, no disrespect for. The Motel 6, but I was just checking for bed bugs. Yeah, it looks pretty clean to be, to give credit where credit's due, so. I did get a full-sized fridge in my room. Everybody else only had mini fridges, but I got the, the queen fridge. And look, I want to say this is no disrespect to Motel 6. I've been to a lot of great Motel 6s. Great, Motel 6, day. sponsor us. And actually yeah. Holiday Inn. We love yeah, Holiday Inn. Kind of we are, we are rebooking to a Holiday Inn. Holiday Inn sponsor yeah. us. That's where we always That's go. The clip. We'll run the clips. Holiday we'll run the clips and the pics. I got to my room and I walked in, the door slammed behind me, and I tried to turn the lights on and I was vaguely darkness. <laughs> oh, yeah, my lights didn't work too. My switches didn't work. <laughs> We've stayed in motels before. Not a slander. They're perfectly it's just... nice. <laughs> this one is no good. Yeah. This one ain't it. Yeah. Okay, much better vibes here. Not because we want them, but because... Cheers! That was a tasty log. Yeah, it was uh, fun to revisit our trials and tribulations in, in Dallas. We go to a lot of these fun haunted places. I don't really have any memories from that, from these trips, really. You know, none of it stands out. I feel like I, I get on the plane, it's like severance almost, you know, I get on the oh, plane yeah, yeah. to go ghost hunting. I don't remember any of it. I get off the plane in LA and I'm back. But I will say that when we are went- Are you sure that actually kicks in when you go to the haunted place? Like, are you sure you're just not permanently severed? Maybe, I don't know. It's possible. Am I even here right now? Who plane. knows? But Dallas did make some memories. I'll never forget oh boy, the, did they. the goo in the Hooters. There was a goo in the room, and there was a Hooters giant billboard outside of you. That's room. right. Unless you did a solo Hooters trip, in which there was also goo involved. No, I think In you, which case, I would think you got, we should probably keep that You're talking yourself. about exactly what I'm talking about. There was goo in the hotel room. We got to that hotel, and it was really gnarly. We made the call because, you know, we started the company and we were like, we can probably stay at a different hotel, right? It was a pretty nasty ass hotel. This is the grossest, no disrespect to Dallas. Hey, I've stayed in plenty of motels or that this. are absolutely beautiful. You know this what, fuck it, I don't not. give a shit. That it sucked ass. That studio suites in Dallas, the worst place I've ever stayed <laughs> in my entire life. It's the worst hotel life. I've ever been to. First, we got stranded at the airport, and so they had to give us this room, which is like, thank you, American Airlines, for giving us this beautiful room. We looked up the link, Shane saw that it was studio suites, and I was like, whoa, is this like an elevated I told Lizzie, six? I was like, oh, this must be one of those places that has like a little kitchenette. We'll have to stop by a grocery store. I thought it was like an elevated version of Motel 6 because it belongs to Motel 6. What they actually did was double down on the vibes of Motel 6. One of the grossest places I've ever <laughs> been in my really entire life. Shit. And we haunt, we hunt ghosts for a living. And uh, it was really bad. 
open the door, turn the light on, immediately starts flickering like a haunted house. I just closed the door immediately. I back. opened my door and I walked in looking for the light. The door slammed behind me. It was pitch black. There was no light. It was like 85 degrees in the room. Yeah. And when I did turn the light on, it did start strobing. Very scary stuff. Um, Shane's curtains were held together by clothespins. It looked like someone tore them off and then tried to put them up with paper clips. It looked like the end of the movie signs, and there were no curtains on there previously, and Shane was like, we need to hide in here and board up the room <laughs> to prevent other people from looking Lizzie in. Lizzie had a full refrigerator in her room. Why? None of it. No Everyone else had a mini fridge. She had a full-size fucking fridge. Just at the foot of her bed. Because everyone knows they want to cook groceries in this gross ass place and catch whatever bacteria anyway, is in there. Studio Six Suites, you are on the naughty list. That's true. That's right. We only we don't put a lot of people on that list, but yeah. And the reason we got shirts from In and Out is because uh, a little airline called American Airlines. I think it was American Airlines. Yeah. American Airlines would not let us get our bags because they had lost them and stranded us in Dallas. Very sweet of them. And then they were like, "We'll make it up to you. We'll put you in the goo shack." <laughs> Let's put you in the goo shack. It's gonna be all good. You guys will get nice and gooey. One of you will get a full size fridge just in case you wanna put yourself really inside nice of it stuff. because the room's 85 degrees. Yeah. But anyway, on to evidence, right? Yeah, let's talk about that. Next up, if you've seen the episode, you know we caught some compelling pieces of evidence. So let's break that shit down. It's the last debrief, folks. We're flying. We just got back from the tour last night. Yeah, we finished the tour. We finished the season. <laughs> We're in cruise control now, baby. Run, baby. We're in cruise control. <laughs> you fucking ready? You ready? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, two of the most compelling pieces of evidence that we got were first when we were in Mike's room and the Maglite and the REM pod were going off at the same time. Ooh, what beautiful music they play. Let's look at a little refresher. I don't want to reach out to whatever may be non-human in here. Hey, if there's something in here that's non-human, oh, like a shit. demon. Wow. The light and the REM pod went on at the same time as soon as we talked about that, which is not oh. my favorite. Oh. Stop touching both of those, please. Can you stop touching the REM pod? Yeah, look at that. Mm, that's some tasty ass evidence. Wouldn't you agree, audience? Oh boy, it actually went a little bit longer than it did in that clip in the episode, but you get the idea. It Shane, how do you explain those two bad boys making sweet, sweet music together? I, I can't explain it any more than you can. No, I explained it. No, well, they're, 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 they're making noise. They're making noise. They're making noise together. And it wasn't that a beautiful song, a beautiful oh God. duet. The ghosts beautiful were, duet. were diddling it. Yeah. They were diddling it hard. Yeah. And uh, I have to say, I've never seen the REM pod go off like that. And normally it takes about 15 seconds to uh, kind of uh, calibrate and it makes little beep boops. However, boy was it beeping and booping this time. Yeah, it was playing some sweet, sweet jazz, baby. I don't really know what the hell that was. I don't think I've ever quite seen it interact in that possible way. Yeah. I don't know, Meg like going off at the same time, you could kind of take that as a random occurrence, but the REM pod going off like that means that there was something actually right there on that kitchen table, in my opinion. But I know it's not in your opinion. <laughs> Hey, hey, you know, you guys don't come to this show to hear me tell you that this is all horse shit, so why bother even saying it? I mean, they kind of do. That's exciting to look at, they right? They do come to the show to, to hear you say that. Hey, it's all shit. horse shit, so uh, there you go. There you go. Uh, Shaniacs uh, any... at home, take a shot. Yeah, uh, the, well, the I prophet has spoken. You know, I, I don't, once again like to reiterate, I don't take any pleasure in, in doing this and saying, like, me personally, I don't believe in that. You know, I'm not here to, I don't exist to debunk you. I just, um, uh, you know, unfortunately that's put upon me and I, I do have to I occasionally a say that. I, I don't, I, I don't enjoy doing that. I think Shaniacs at home are like, fuck yeah, dude. No. We're, Dunk on him. It's not a, it's not a, Dunk it's not a war for us and it shouldn't be. It's that's, not a war, that's guys. That's what sound like at home. You were pretty freaked out though, right? Yeah, because it was a weird thing we were saying. We've used the REM pod for, what, two years now? We've never seen it do that. It never, so. went, it never went beyond calibration like that. It was all the way, it was dancing in the purple, dancing at the highest levels of EMF. Yeah, it was going crazy, man. It was nuts. Uh, the next piece I wanted to talk about was the scream that we heard on the static cam. This is a scream that the rest of the crew who was outside on the porch did not hear, so it makes it highly likely that that was not an animal outside because it did just come from the house. <laughs> I wonder what uh, you think about that. I think it was an animal outside. Uh, I've We talked about this a little bit during some of our live shows, yeah, but yeah. 
I looked it up because I had my hunch that it was maybe a fox screaming. Yes, yes. Uh, we played some audio of a fox screaming, uh, and it sounded identical. And also, there was a guy at one of the shows who was asking us a question at one point. He was like, my wife is an animal biologist. She's in the front row. She said, that's a fox. So, so either it's ghosts or the thing that sounds like a fox and is confirmed to sound like a fox by an animal biologist happened and was a fox and maybe people on our crew just don't remember hearing it or we're talking or we're doing something yeah. that uh, distracted or, them. At the or moment. it came from the house. Or it came from the and house the and was a teeny crew, tiny little scream. And our, the crew members outside, they all had their ears yeah. plugged like this. Yeah. Maybe it wasn't a fox, maybe it was something else in the house that sounds like a child screaming. You know how everyone has appliances in their house that sound like a child screaming. Perhaps that's what it was. It's just a fox. I think it was a blender. Maybe stuck a blender stuck with like, maybe somebody was making a protein shake. Well, now you're being silly. I think it was And a then we forgot that's a that silly. we were making a protein shake. And it was stuck. You know, sometimes the motor gets stuck and it goes wee -nee 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 -nee. It could have been that. You're ridiculous. Now moving right along, uh, this week our producer Lizzie is joining us. Lizzie, come on down. Oh, Lizzie, thank you for joining us on Qua, where we answer questions directly from you folks, the viewers at home, including at least two questions every week exclusively from our beautiful patrons over on Patreon. Who also coincidentally get to watch all of our episodes a day early. What? Uh, yeah, that's true. Lizzie, let's start with some questions for you. Uh, our first one comes from Emma Nelson on Patreon. Emma asks, if ghosts were in fact real and you became one, what three words would you have the obelisk display to let the ghoul boys know it's you? And this has to be an immediate, <coughs> that's obviously Lizzie Lockard who passed away yesterday. Yeah. I got this, I got this. You got this? Yeah. Tell me I'm wrong. If oh, wait. Three words oh, wait. Yeah. oh, I know what it is. Wait, I bet you we can both wait, say it at the same wait, time. Let's see if all three of us can say it at once. Okay. One, Soft. two, three. Soft, Soft sweet bodies. bodies. We did not plan that off camera. That's one of the Lizzie Lockhart's favorite things to say is like, all right, everybody, get your soft, sweet little bodies ready to go. Anytime we have oh guests that watch her, she'll be like, you know, if, even if she's barely met them, she'll be like, get your soft, sweet body over here. <laughs> Thank God we don't have an HR. <laughs> A yeah. good question and a good answer. <laughs> All right, next question is from Kimber. Cool name. AKA Captain Quesadilla. Whoa. Well, how do you, sir? Uh, Lizzie, what is your favorite part of working on Ghost Files? The tour, the planning, the shoots, etc. Probably the shooting portion because if I've done my job correctly, I don't have to do anything once we show up on location. That's true. <laughs> I just kind of sit there, oversee. You get to enjoy the fruits of your labor at that yeah. point. Problem solve in case something comes up, yeah. like American Airlines putting us in the goo shack. Yes, I did get us different hotel rooms in the hotel goo shack. They, uh, we it was so let great. it be known though, <laughs> Lizzie Lockard puts us in the Holiday Inn Express, which is a beautiful place. Beautiful I place. do. Sponsor American us. Airlines puts us in the Goose Shack. Yeah. So who's a better booker, Look, this I... big <laughs> conglomerate or just one Lizzie Lockard? Lizzie, you also moderated. I want to say almost half of our yeah. uh, live shows, which was really fun. You did yeah, yeah, a great, yeah. great job. Yeah. Uh, it was fun having you there. Did you enjoy touring? Uh, I did. In front of the crowds. The crowd. Hearing the roar. The roar of applause. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, the uh, the first show we did, that I did with you guys was in Minneapolis and I walked out and I couldn't stop my, I just like, that microphone it makes you feel so powerful, <laughs> you know? <laughs> What and I like the first one. I I did one of those things where I was like, if you enjoy the show, give me a woo, and the the vibrations of the crowds <laughs> woo back at me. God, Power like trip. a drug. Yeah. I did it at most of the other shows after that. Lizzie I, asked if she could take the microphone home with her, and they said no. Yeah, I asked if we could just have Ryan and Shane restrained off stage so I could take over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was really fun, though. I'm glad we could have you there for, yeah. for that. time. Here's another question. This is from Cecily. Hi, Lizzie. If you could introduce a new piece of ghost hunting tech to the show, what would it be? Could be real or something you made up or something with which to keep the guys in line. Love you much. Woo. Something, it, it's fun that it could, Ryan, are you okay? What? What just happened to you? No, Did you see an orb? He's no, stroking nothing. out. Nothing, dude. He saw an orb. 
That is fine. Ryan C. Orb. So we're still working on the ghost net. Um, it's not fully flushed out yet. That's an actual net. That's mm -hmm. not the internet. This mm -hmm. is an actual tactile net. That For I'll scooping use. them like butterflies. You know that um. What is this called? When you go to a crime scene and somebody tried to like, clean up the blood and you spritz it with that that stuff and then you bring like a black light in there and it makes all the blood turn purple? Well, I haven't been on many crime scenes, but it sounds like you've tried out. to clean up a couple, which I mean, makes me believe that you're a murderer. Look, bleach is not going to cut it. That's all I'm saying. You need okay. something so they, stronger. So wait, I don't think I've ever... Lumin luminol? I, I don't know anything about this. Is this... Did you learn this from watching Violet, Dexter? Can you I think Google you learned luminol? it on site. Is this a Dexter thing? No. Where did you I learn mean, about this? They do this? have it on Dexter, but it's it's just like Dexter probably drinks look, that stuff. Look, I'm a white woman. He's we twisted. love crime shows. Give me a crime doc You're any the child day. Of Charles Manson. So the thing is, you luminol, spray you spray spray where there might have been blood that was cleaned up, oh, and so then you, it lights what you up. Want so is, I want to like spritz the ghosts and then bring a black light, and they're all just like. What you're looking Ooh. for is boominol. Yes. Okay. Boominol. That's what I want, baby. Can you imagine just like spritzing around and then you like turn on a black light and you're just surrounded by? That'd be kind of cool. It would be cool be if sick. you could throw like paint at a ghost and like like yeah, at the like end of Hollow It Man. Follows or Hollow oh, Man. Man. Yeah. yeah. Our next cue is from Kay Lynn Smith. Kay Lynn asks, in your opinion, who would be the more annoying ghost, Ryan or Shane? That's actually a really good question. <laughs> I think in regards to them haunting each other, they would both be incredibly annoying. But in but to regards to haunting me, I think it would probably be you. I mean, unfortunately, I think this goes back to how annoying we are in real life is what you're basing this on, right? <laughs> no, not even. This is like, this is like, you know, if Ryan is haunting me in like, I, I feel like the two most annoying things that he could possibly do is I like wake up in the morning, come downstairs, I get my cup of coffee, and then an hour later when I'm still sleepy, I realize it's decaf. Yeah. Like he swapped it over, or, or I'll be or sitting would, there working and ESPN just comes on. He would haunt you the way he slacks people. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> god. Slack, by the way, is a, a messaging service that we use I would internally at Watcher. In which, you know, when you're mind. using Slack, you could type out as much as you want before you hit enter. It's but like Ryan text. sort of does. Uh, hey, it's me. <laughs> free association. Ryan, I was thinking earlier today about this issue, and I've come to the conclusion That's 18 that. That's wait a minute. That you just heard right there. 18 different lines of text could already have been on one. Slack. Could have been one. And it's funny because my wife has this exact same complaint that I text that way as well. Money. And it's because I need to in immediately press enter, otherwise I'll forget what I'm saying. <laughs> that makes no crazy. sense. You're doing Which more doesn't work. make actually a lot of sense now that I say that, but it is the way my brain works, unfortunately. I do think I'd be the more annoying ghost, yeah. though, because I will say that I get more of a sick pleasure out of annoying people than Shane does. Yes, you certainly do. Like that guy, in, uh, uh, <laughs> what we do in the shadows. The Colin Robbins. The energy goat, yeah. uh, energy vampire. <laughs> if I'm a ghost, there's no ramifications. There's nothing you can do to me. I can just, just torture you forever. I'll catch you in the ghost net. And That's put true. You, until, and put you in the goo shack. Until, well, don't threaten me with a good time. As a ghost, that might be funny. Just <laughs> torture everybody who lives in the goo shack. <laughs> anyway, next, next question. question. Be fun to go to hell and torture Satan. Kelly wants to know, what would it take for you to do a solo investigation on one of the haunted locations? I don't think a smaller location would bother me, but Wait, being in like, Waverly. either of these prisons, Waverly, kind of just thinking about it, my heart is starting I know. to like- I, I can't believe that was the first one I had to do it. It fucking sucked. That, like, ooh, no, and I, you know, I, I would just be talking constantly. Now, Lizzie, imagine one of your pals tells you that a walkie to start your investigation is somewhere. And in fact, it's at the farthest opposite part of the building, and you are now doing a solo investigation for an hour. You chose this life. It's good content. It I was, did not like, choose to do an hour investigation. That. Shane made that happen, because he thought it'd be funny. You that chose really me to long. be your co-host. It's unbelievably rude. You know what, maybe he would be the more annoying ghost, because he does mean things like that. <laughs> mean things. <laughs> that uh, made the episode. It was pretty good. Yeah. Ryan came back afterwards after he got the walkie. He was like, I was so angry. <laughs> so bad. We can't, was... It's completely useless. Completely <laughs> useless footage. We can't watch We can't watch any of that. It's going to be horrible. The fans think, are going to hate the show. I think to put it in perspective, <laughs> if, if, if Shane did that to you. They didn't talk. He didn't talk to Shane you know for what? like a week. I'm going to, I'm going to, next season, I'm going to do more of those things to you. Just it, because, just because you deserve it. If Shane had done that to you, 
it would be seen much differently. I probably would have cried. Yeah, if he'd done that to Sarah or anybody, <laughs> it would have been yeah, immediately yeah, yeah. construed as mean. In retrospect, I think you finally got there, but I would have hoped that in the moment you could have elevated yourself and realized, well, this is some fun content. No, you have to go and this wait is, really by yourself. It this is en now that's entertainment. It was you know, the we got to give him the razzle dazzle, Ryan. It was the worst. And sometimes you got to crack a few eggs to make an omelet. Oh you know? my God. All right, next question is from uh, at Hopeful Romance. He's getting mad again. Hot. Well, this is not, I'm not angry right now. This is another. I'm so, not angry. Here's the thing. This is another because Shane. I'm not. Shane is a different annoyer than me because I will set out to annoy someone in the beginning. Where Shane will, if he could sense, the long con. Yeah, if he could sense any sort of rise in their energy, then he will twist the knife, and then he'll like, he'll say like, "Ooh, sounds like so you're getting, getting a little so upset." Sounds like there, someone's huh? getting a little upset because he knows that's gonna make them more upset. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, but <laughs> it's it's exactly what I'm talking about. You seem like you're upset. But. That's a good ghost question. That like actually unpacked like a fun dynamic. Yeah, Anyways, next question is from At Hopeful Romances. Hi Lizzie, I'm super interested in becoming a producer. An unscripted producer is super interesting to me. Could you go into what the pre-production process is for a show like Ghost Files? So it starts obviously with us. Maybe it's, maybe it's not obvious. We start by finding the location, which either sometimes through research on our own and reach out to the location or sometimes we'll put a call out to like we're looking for spooky places in Tennessee or whatever and then people will will have Ryan film something and then I'll have Simone our social media person she'll go and post it online people will submit evidence we'll go through the evidence usually I like to peek through it before Mark and Ryan look at it to see if there's anything that I think is really stupid or a joke because I don't have time to waste on that. So I get rid of those. She does not <clears throat> sanction our buffoonery. No. I make them look at it and then we, if we have enough evidence that we like, we reach out to the location, try and lock it, then we keep saying we, I then have the uh, people who sent in the evidence do some legal paperwork to release it and then film the videos that you see that are like, hi, I'm Joe and I saw a thing that's in this place. My like. name's Joe and I've seen a big orb. No, that's what they said. <laughs> yeah. I saw a big orb that's the size of a pumpkin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I would really hate that. Uh, and then it's, we have somebody <laughs> research uh, the location. We have Elena Rook and RJ Blake doing that. They've been great. And then, oh, Jesus. <laughs> and then uh, Rob, RJ, he will write a little script for the studio portion. We'll book crew, There's travel, We're still going. hotels, we got travel, hotels, cars. <laughs> and she has never that. once booked us at a. Son Motel six Never Son once. Of a <laughs> and then uh, we shoot things and this I got derailed. This wasn't a very good answer to your <laughs> no, question. You got, I mean, you but that's the broad strokes. If you're not organized, just quit. <laughs> Don't try. And it seems That's like it. you got to have good uh, phone skills, <laughs> yeah. you know, oh, calling I people up. I hate the cell phone, man. You, you also got to be prepared to see an orb the size of a pumpkin. <laughs> you also have to <laughs> mentally prepare yourself for this bullshit. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> but Lizzie does a lot of hard work is the point, as evidenced by how long it took her to tell you how to do <clears throat> one episode. Yeah. It's a very long process, so organization, and I would expect grit is also important. Grit. Grit. Ma a little bit of moxie. That's right. Duckman. Our last Hello. Lizzie cue is from Duckman Gary. It's spoopy season. Need to hear you say Why that. Why is that a thing? Spoopy. spoopy season. Three spoopy, five me. <laughs> you <know>. What? What? <laughs> you never heard that? No. People used to say, too spooky for me, and then people started saying, three spooky, five me. Anyway, Duckman Gary says, and wondering if you could do an episode on any haunted place on earth, where would it be and why? Very novel question. Lizzie, where would you like to go? Well, 
These, the, my answer is actually a combination of the answers you guys give a lot. Buckingham Palace would be so be legit. Never gonna happen. Uh, definitely, absolutely would not. Would love to catch that. Bag ourselves. Um, so if anybody shoes. has any. Get her while she's hot. Woo! Yeah, if anybody's got any of the HRHs or His Majesty on speed dial, let me know. Yeah. Um, and the other one would be somewhere in Japan, which I know Ryan is also I interested. I would love to go there. So I think it would be cool. I don't know. And I, Asian horror films are always the creepiest, I feel like. So I think it'd be cool to unpack that IRL. But also it'd be interesting in the way that I think we'd need to figure out how to do it in a respectful way and also probably have a translator that because be... Ryan going in and being like, shit in my mouth, yeah. you know, they probably, one would assume the Japanese ghosts don't speak English and wouldn't know. But what does it matter if they don't speak English? Like if I'm a ghost, yeah. And, and Ryan's like, go diddle the REM pod. Yeah, yeah, but Are if I'm- Are you gonna know what no, no, that no, means? No, but what I'm saying is if I'm a ghost and I'm in a house and a bunch of Japanese people walked into my house and started talking Japanese, I'd be like, hey, what's going on? I'd still be like, get the fuck out of here. I can't get out of my house. And if they put down a thing that was like all like, bleh, 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 I'd be like, the what table? the fuck is this? It's my table. I'm yeah. about to watch get Cheers. Get your shit off my table. What the fuck? I would be curious to see like, uh, like a popular Japanese ghost hunting YouTube channels are there any if you guys know of any <laughs> japanese ghost hunting shows can you put them in the comments because we're curious what is that is there like a cult i mean because i different cultures have different attitudes toward uh ghosts and the paranormal oh, i, I assume paranormal is huge in, in japanese is it culture. really everyone they have most of like our media is around but i've heard that uh uh, Jay horror is a thing. Yes, yes, yes. But like ghost hunting, are, do they frown upon no, it? No, they don't. Oh, they don't. Okay. No, I don't believe so. Right. I mean, then again, yeah, there's yeah. a different view on death there. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. But actually, you know what? Ghost hunting. I don't want to say that I that I know we all believe in ghosts. I don't know if hunting ghosts is a thing that we <laughs> like actually do. You sp spoke about <laughs> all <laughs> Japanese people in the world. The we all do believe in ghosts. We do. <laughs> Anybody who's Asian out there knows this. Any Asian people believe in ghosts. We just do. Like yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. is just the truth. I know it's, it's in more our, of a culture. It's in our culture. Carter, right? do you believe in ghosts? Uh, uh, yeah. Brendan, do you believe in ghosts? I want to. I'd be willing to believe I would be willing to Mark, bet that most Mark, do you believe in ghosts? Mark's a no. I would be willing to bet that most people, who, like, I, especially people who are my age, like Asian kids out there, have heard a ghost story from their parents. Oh, for at some sure, point. yeah, yeah. It's probably it's your like, mom told me ghost stories. Well, may, or maybe my mom was just a freaky lady, but I'm pretty sure those things can both be true. All right. Well, on that note, I'm gonna get out of here. All right. <laughs> thanks for popping in, Lizzie, good and chat. thanks for a great season. Thanks for watching, guys. Also, a really good point you made there, Shane, about because I hear people squawking about this in the comments, like. Oh, why? Why are they speaking English in a place like like? Because we've investigated some places like in like in Mexico, yeah, or or, or 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 spoken to ghosts who don't speak English. Like, why are they expecting these ghosts to respond to them if they're speaking in English? It's exactly what he just said. Don't respond. If somebody came in my house and just started mucking about, regardless if I spoke the language, I'd try and fight them. Yeah, I'd scratch them. You'd scratch them. This is a season finale. I just want to see audience. You tell us. Who does a better impression of a dead body? Who's more convincing? Okay, hold on, wait, wait, hold on. on. Like if you walked in the office and you. Wait, hang on. Let me. Let me. You can't keep. Let's go to this next question. Oh yeah, our here. next question is from Cody Shamback, 1982. We got various uh, uh, iterations of this question. Cody asks, Shane, would you ever want to bring your own tools and methods to an investigation site? For example, may hauntings could be gas leaks, animals, <laughs> or other natural causes. Instead of just bullying Ryan, as fun as that must be, you could also conduct your own investigation into other causes. I want to be clear. I don't think I bully Ryan. Um, me simply stating my opinion is not bullying Ryan. Me pointing out that the walking device at the is top he... floor versus right. walking at the bottom floor. You... Me. I mean, I can't help but walk on the top floor when you're on the bottom floor, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> there it is, right there. <laughs> hey, you set me up. You know, I had to go over that one. You know, every now and then, I I am pressed to point out that uh, a lot of this is pseudoscience. Not a lot of it. It's all pseudoscience. I could bring something like um, like something to measure the gas. I feel like the gas leak thing. I don't know that we ever encounter, I don't 
think that we've ever been in a location where there is an active gas leak. I feel like anytime you hear I've about- I've stayed with you in rooms, there's been a lot hey of active brother, gas hey leaks. Hey brother, now that's, now that's, <laughs> now that's yes, true. Me. You're gonna need a bigger instrument. Yeah, and uh, I mean, uh, don't sell yourself short. You're also putting out some units, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, BTUs. We're, hey, we're human, we're human. A fun fact is when we were doing our show in Vegas, at one point I was uh, waiting by the, the green room because we were in the Luxor Hotel and I was waiting by the bank of uh, elevators <laughs> in the lobby. And there was a whole line of people waiting to get into the Ghost Files show. And I was, and I'm sorry to bring it back to this, okay, but this happened, okay? And I was over by the corner in the elevators. I think I was waiting for Lizzie and Sarah to That's get over. That's your first mistake, me. by the way. Yeah. Doing and, it in the corner. And I had some pressure inside me and I let it out <clears> and it yeah. was quite loud. It was really louder than I thought. Because you're in the corner, it's bouncing off yeah. of that wall. Luckily, the nearest people were like 20 feet away, but there was a man who looked over me and he just went, God damn. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, sorry about that. He was like, you don't have to apologize. It's called being a human being. Yeah. And I was like, it's just louder than I thought it would be. And he was like, and it echoed. And I was like, yeah, it Corner. did. And he said, you made my night, man. Oh my and God. I was just standing there in my ghost files jacket. I was like, all right, I'm going to go now. What if after he said, you made my night, man, how about this? And he ripped one right there. <laughs> Then what would you do? I would have gone and given him a hug. I think I, anytime you hear about like a gas leak in a place, it's always when people are experiencing like crazy shit. Yeah. Like they're seeing yeah. like the specter of death, like strangling their daughter or something. Or it's intentional, like in Bourne, when Jason Bourne turned on the gas and then put up newspaper in the toaster. To light the, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that the whole place exploded. Yeah, that happens. So I don't, I don't know that like, Anytime people see orbs or hear an EVP, I don't think it's a gas leak most of the time. You could take an EMF reader and take a baseline reading of all the rooms. Maybe, I don't know, I could bring a level, you know? <laughs> what would a leveler? Oh, I guess we're like the, the, the doors. I don't know, the doors and the balls. We should have a leveler though, because if a ball moved on its own, it would be so funny if the next thing we cut to is you with a level <laughs> on the ground, being like, no, 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 level to me. It. And honestly, if it didn't look level, I would be like, fair enough. I'll Round's bring some not, tools next season. Round's not level. Yeah. Our next question is from Zaber129 on YouTube. Did you guys consider that the deer you guys saw was actually several gnomes in a costume? They duped you both. That'd be a lot of gnomes. That'd be good. Well, not that many. Probably 15? Yeah, that's a lot of gnomes. Oh, I guess you're right. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think two. about that. That's a good thing. Like the fish from Finding Nemo just kind of forming a, and I guess they would have to put some sort of like. It's so funny when they did that. I forgot skin about on that. on top of themselves yeah. though, because otherwise, God, I wish I could have saw a no. That's okay. Next question, Ryan. Okay. Also from YouTube, Aunt Lily G asks, does the crew ever get spooked or has something strange happen to pre slash post production when cameras aren't rolling? Yeah, all the time. The one thing I could think of this season was our static cam kept dying even though we kept charging it. Well, and in this episode in particular. And in this episode, yes, of course, there was Sam, our head of post, was with us and she was sitting in a car outside. Her first she, ghost hunt. She was her first ghost hunt. She did not want to go in the house when we were doing our solos. Uh, which no one is because it's our solos, but she didn't want to stand outside with the rest of the crew, so she sat in the car, and then she said the car started shaking, so I don't know what to think of that. I think she's full of it. Or it was like maybe the gentleman just suggested before. Bunch of gnomes. Several gnomes yeah. working in unison to push it back and That's forth, right. heave ho and whatnot. But see, if I'm Sam, I'm in the car, I'm the head of post? I'm not getting my phone out to record footage of this? Maybe she was in there like, ah! <laughs> Can you imagine? Put the seatbelt on. I'm imagining a behind the scenes of like just seeing uh, you be outside doing your solo interview and everyone like just interviewing you. <laughs> Meanwhile, the car in the background is just tumbling down the hill. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Our next question on to, uh, oh, our patrons. Uh, this is from Chuck Dite. Chuck asks, what's the plan if you ever get an FBA, that's full bodied apparition, right in front of you? I kind of feel like Ryan would shit his pants and Shane would run away screaming if there were an actual ghost that fully appeared right in front of both. I think my part is accurate. Shane would just stand there. I think and, I, yeah, I don't. And he'd pull out his phone. He'd be like, yeah, honestly, at that point, I'm, I'm trying to get footage. And I would too, while shitting my pants. There was a time when we were at um, 
uh, Penhurst Asylum. That's right. Where we were down in the tunnels. They were supposed to be clear of staff, but there was one staff member who like was like way down the tunnel, and he jumped out, and we had no idea there was someone there. We assumed there wasn't. So. For all we knew, it could have been an FBA. Mm. Um, and I'm pretty sure we both just stood there and were like, who the fuck is that? <laughs> we did do that. So I don't know that we'd run away. Even you, I think, would be... I would be shitting while recording. It kind of depends, because the FBA that you believe you saw in um, Savannah? Yeah, Sorrel Weed House in Savannah. I thought I saw a person, though. You didn't freak out. No, my first thought was that's a person, because yeah. it looked like a person. I think it would also kind of depend on like what they looked like. If, but in that case, we didn't confirm it was a person because I followed it and it just disappeared. So, you know, yeah. I, I do think I actually saw a ghost there. Yeah. But yeah, like if it was dressed like a, you know, an old Victorian Moppet, then of course, you know, I'm gonna be like, that's a that's fucking true. ghost right there. Which is why when I'm a ghost, I'm gonna be naked because yep. there'll be no doubt that that is a ghost. I don't know why that would be the case. Well, if you saw me in a haunted house, like, dancing like that. You're gonna haunt, okay. Next up we have a question from Sarah is spooky. Sarah asks, for Ryan, what was the most unnerving location for you this season? The Dyke House and this one seem to have you spooked. For Shane, I know the Ovilus jump scared you here, I'm a Shaniac, but I'm also a jumpy bitch. Have any other locations this season managed to make you jump? Another excellent season from the world's most professional ghost hunters. Hopefully next season, you'll get one to shit in your mouth. Yeah, I mean, look, the, the Dyke home was very scary. I, there's something unnerving about a house being haunted more so than like a prison. A prison, you kind of expect it. A family home, there's something a little bit more uh, sinister about that to me. And then as far as this last place that we were at, I mean, it's just a creepy farmhouse that was the most remote location remote. perhaps that we've ever investigated. There weren't neighbors, which also, by the way, what that scream? What, what that scream? What that scream be then? Well, we've already talked about that. No, it was a pretty uneventful season for me. I had a good time. We went to a lot of fun places. Mm -hmm. uh, I do want to give a shout out to uh, Barbara Cadabra. Uh, in this episode. That's right. We've met a lot of great ghosts throughout this series, but I think Barbara Cadabra is up there with, with Nighttime Dan and uh, Devil Baby. Yeah, yeah. A cast of characters, a cast of ghouls that we've collected over yeah. our time. Huge Barbara Cadabra fan. I assume Barbara Cadabra is the woman with the bugging eyes who's I would imagine dancing by her. the lake. Yeah. yeah. And last but not least, Rhiannon Richards asks, is there anything you would change about this season looking back? For example, time of visit, location, methods used, headspace going in, travel methods, etc. Thanks for another great season. The countdown begins for season three. I mean, look, there's a whole bunch of things that we're looking to change and always trying to improve the show. Every time we finish the show, we have a post-mortem in which we uh, think of all the possible ways that we can improve the show, the format, the investigating. So there's a whole variety of things that we're looking into. I don't want to spoil them here. So uh, don't mistake my vagueness for not having anything in mind. We have plenty of things in mind and I'm pretty excited for you guys to yeah, see we season three. Yeah, we a pretty robust meeting about things we want to okay. attempt next season. That's right. And mix up a little bit. So it should be fun. I'm excited for season three. It's gonna be great. Yeah. Well, that wraps up this investigation. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to this season of Ghost Files and Ghost Files Debrief. We'll be back next year with more spooky spots for you guys to feast on. Some I think you're gonna like quite a bit. That's right, quite a bit, quite a bit. And uh, thanks again, and remember, if you'd like more behind the scenes content and to see Ghost Files episodes, as well as all of our other shows early, consider becoming a member of our Patreon community over at patreon.com slash watcher. Lots of goodies over there. Folks, we will see you next time. Next spooky season. That's right. When the veil gets very thin. But there's also going to be a bunch of other fun stuff coming up on Watcher Entertainment, so <laughs> don't worry. Yeah. That's true, you'll still see us. <laughs> That's how you'll see us goobers uh, uh, on your screen every week. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>